Hey guys, what's up? So today we are going to be doing a little accuracy test video. Um, surprisingly, probably one of my most um, asked about things, if that makes any sense. The Faxon 11 and a half inch barrel. What's up with it? What's the accuracy doing? What does Faxon say? Can I fix this thing? So let's talk about it. All right, so some of y'all, a lot of y'all, surprisingly, have been asking me about this barrel. Okay, this is the 11 and a half inch. Uh, let's try to get it right. The 11 and a half inch mid length system. It's a one and eight twist. It's Faxon's, I think it's their gunner barrel, or I think that's their gunner line or whatever, but it's their 11 and a half inch mid length barrel. As you can see, it has its gas block right up front, right? Kind of like how the Mark 18s have their gas block really close up to the front. You have very, very little dwell time in a 10.3 inch barrel with a carbine length. This is an 11 and a half inch barrel with a mid length. Um, it has run well, surprisingly, it has run well. I wouldn't say it's, it's the most drastic difference between a mid length and a carbine um, as far as like recoil. Like you can tell the difference. It, it is it is relatively smooth for a short little guy. And you add the can on there, it adds more back pressure and stuff. And it, so it kind of comes out a little bit even. But the problem is, if y'all have been following along for very long, this guy doesn't shoot exceptionally well. I had great hopes about Faxon. It's my first Faxon barrel, right? I've had some, I think I have some ballistic advantage. Um, I've got some high dollar barrels, right? And my Mark 12 and all that kind of stuff. So I know what good accuracy, I, I know guns have potential for good accuracy. And sometimes the barrel's the issue, sometimes the ammo's the issue. So primarily, admittedly, I do shoot mostly garbage ammo out of these. So Tula, Wolf, all that kind of stuff. The cheapest stuff that I can find, which right now, yeah, we won't talk about that. But uh, granted, with that ammo, out of some guns, I have gotten exceptional, like, cloverleaf style accuracy, surprisingly. Like, it's shocking when that happens. Most of the time, you get about an inch or two inches or something like that, between one and two inches. I mean, off of, off of a rest, not off-handed at 300 yards. I'm not claiming that kind of stuff, but off of a rest at 100 yards or whatever, you should get between one and two inches. In general, that's what I remember getting. If you look at some of my videos, go back and look at them. That's what I remember getting. It's not exceptional. It's not like I'm printing little bitty groups, but I'm getting like like a half dollar, whatever size of group that is. Off of a rest, with an optic, all that good stuff, okay? Sometimes it's wild. It all depends on the barrel. Some barrels love it, some barrels hate it. So it, it all is very depending. So why am I saying that, okay? I'm, I'm trying to weed out any issue I'm trying to I'm trying to narrow it down to the barrel itself, okay? Because some people are saying that they had some accuracy issues. Some people are saying their barrels were excellent. I talked to or I emailed um, and corresponded with I guess it's a fancy way to say it uh, with Faxon, and they were they're straight up front ready to replace the barrel. I mean, if I can't get better accuracy out of it, because so, right now I'm getting between that three and four inch accuracy with some good stuff with some hand loads with some. Um, I don't remember what all I've used before, but that's why I've come out here today so I don't have any questions about it and to figure it out once and for all, what does this guy do? So we're going to take off the EOTech and we're going to put on a, uh, if I can find it, put on this guy. This is a Lupul Mark IV. This came off of a Mark 12 clone build I was doing. This is a 3.5 by 10, so this is a good quality, very good scope. In my opinion, I actually, not in my opinion, this is the best scope I think that I have. I have another uh, loophole, but it's not this, doesn't have, it's not 10 power. Anyway, we're going to hook up this guy. We're going to run some of this stuff, which is my absolute favorite, if you can find it. The 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 Freedom Munitions 556, 77 grain remanufactured stuff. I don't know about their new line. Every time I've gotten this ammunition, it has shot phenomenally. I'm not even kidding. I'm not joking. I'm not being facetious. That stuff's gold. Okay. I've also got some, I think this is some 77 grain Fiocchi. We've got some hand loads. These are what I tried to clone and get as close as I could to the Mark 262. All right. So uh, 77 grain Sierra Match Kings um, going about the same velocities and stuff out of the Mark 12. So it's as close as I can get it loaded to that. And then we do have some Black Hills. This is 223 reman remanufactured stuff. They're 77 grain stuff. So it's a little bit different than the Mark 262 stuff, but. It's still good quality. It's still it's still Black Hills. So that's the ammo we're going to run through it. I'm also going to run some Tula through it just because that's what I usually shoot through it. I'll probably do that first just to kind of warm in the barrel, and that'll probably be the worst group. And I'll do one before, and then I'll wrap up with a 
with a group of Tula. So let's get this guy dialed in. I got to strip off all the sights and put the optic on. But let's do it and let's see what happens. I'm interested to see what, exactly what happens. If this ends up being a barrel issue or is if, it, if it's just me. So let's do it. All righty, guys. So admittedly, that muzzle device is on there. I don't remember if I rock set it or if it is just stuck because I have not taken that thing off since I really put this thing together and it is carbon caked in there. So I did not bring my my uh, action rod or anything. So the torque I'm having to put on that to get it to break loose, I am i don't want to mess up my lower and my upper because I have no way to grab it and it's just torquing on itself. It's not good. You shouldn't do that. So I'm going to leave it on there. So that is one wild card that I wish I could remove that, but I don't think that that's going to play into this at all. From when I remember putting it on, it's not overly tight. When I know if you squeeze it too tight, if you tighten down a barrel, a muzzle device too tight, you literally can squeeze the end of your barrel, which that's at the end of your barrel. So that's where it can, you can really start seeing flyers and just craziness with your accuracy because it's like having a perfect throw of the football, but at the end, you kind of do some weird flick with your fingers. Well, then it's just inconsistent. It's going to go everywhere. So I wish I could get it off to remove that variability, but right now I can't get it off. So we're just going to go with it as is. I'm going to get this guy sighted in and we're not looking at how close to the bullseye I can get for y'all that maybe might be new to this kind of concept and stuff. You're not looking at how close you can get to the bullseye. You want to get it on paper and you want to get it close to the bullseye, right? So that you can actually utilize all the target space but you're looking at shot, shot group size, right? So even if it's not hitting the bullseye where you're aiming, there's different weights, different manufacturers, different everything. So you're looking at the group, the, the size of the group, okay? So keep an eye on that. I'm not gonna bore y'all with all the details and everything. I'm not gonna make that kind of video. So I'm going to shoot this. I might throw in some little shooting stuff here and there, but I'm gonna shoot this and then we'll talk about it after it's all said and done and we'll see what we find out about it, all right? Let's do it. All right, guys, that was pretty much it. Um, everything seemed to function fine as far as the rifle itself. We shot it suppressed and unsuppressed, so the exact same groups, exact same patterns, different targets, obviously. Um, kept everything on 10 power. Uh, I wish I was able to get the muzzle device off. That thing is either rock set or it is carbon locked on there. It is not coming off. Not, not the suppressor, but the muzzle device. So I wanted to shoot this thing bare bones, no muzzle device at all to remove any variability. But I wasn't able to get it off right now. And I, like again, I, like I just said, I think it's either rock set, uh, lock tight, whatever. Excuse me, or it's it's just carbon locked on there, and I'm not getting it off without a action wrench or something like that to hold the the upper. Anyway, I think it's fine. I don't think it's going to be an issue doing it that way. Um, so let's go check out the targets. See what we did. We shot them in the same order and everything. So let's let's just go check it out. Okay. Hopefully this all shows up. I got my little cheat sheet to remember which groups are which groups. This is Tula, this is Tula, Black Hills, Free Ammunition, Fioki, Hand Loads. This shot right here is taken from a different gun. Don't worry about that, don't worry about this. Okay, Let's see what kind of accuracy we got. So, take that away. Ultimately, I don't know. I don't remember what the manufacturer says, but anything between one and two inches is fine with me. If it's one and two inches, is fine. If it's three and four inches, it's not that great. All right. Tula. Let's see. We're running somewhere around a four and a half to a five. So let's just call that 475. 4.75 inches. Okay. That was the first shot or the first group. The second, or the, the last group after firing everything, you're talking a six and a quarter. 6.25 inches. Okay. Let's move up. We did Fioki. Fioki is sitting at um, two and a half. I don't know if you can see that, but that's around, Ryan, just thinking flies. That's about two and a half inches. Okay, 2.5. Okay, Freedom Munition. You're looking at three and a half. Without the flyer, you still got a three inch group. 3.5. Black Hills, right at a three inch group. 
without the flyer, you're within that two inch group, but it's still there, three inches. All right, that was with the muzzle device. Let's move over here and check out the target for the suppressed. All right, let's see if anything changed over here as long as we can see everything. Same exact order. I'm gonna mark it so I don't forget. Don't get stuff confused. This is Tula. This is Tula. Black Hills. Green Munition. Yoki. And hand loads. All right, starting with Tula. That's not bad, but we have these guys in here. You're talking a roughly a four and three quarter. 4.75 inches. That was the before, after, and I shot all this. I came back and afterwards, Tula came in right at two inches. Okay, that's not bad actually. Hand loads, these didn't do very well. Hand loads are at, what's that, four and a quarter? 4.25 inches. <laughs> Excuse me, wow, no reflection, man. The Fiocchi is at really at like four and a quarter. <laughs> four and a quarter, 4.25 inches. Pretty munition, told you you did good. Right at two inches. Black Hills, there's a flyer down there, but if it wasn't for that flyer, this would be an inch group. But that's at two and three quarters. 2.75 inches. Alrighty guys, wind's picking up. Hopefully it's not too bad. Um, and it looks like it's gonna try to storm. So let's wrap this thing up. We went and checked the targets right here. I think I forgot to measure the hand load at the unsuppressed, um, the unsuppressed target, but I got it written down here. Um, right here. Basically, this is what we got. I'll shout out the numbers for y'all and you can kind of, you can kind of see it and maybe read along a little bit, but basically we shot these in order this way. We shot Tula on the suppressed side. We got four, seven, five, right? We shot Fiocchi, um, uh, what's you unsuppressed first? Tula, four, seven, five. Fioki 2.5, hand load 325, free munition 3.5, Black Hills 3 inches, again Tula same ammo uh, 625. We went over to the suppressed side, we shot Tula <clears throat> 475, we shot Fioki 425, we shot hand loads 425, we shot free munition uh, 2 inches, Black Hills 275, Tula 2 inches. So you do have some differences there where sometimes you'll get like, like for instance, Tula down here, our last group on our suppressed, on our unsuppressed side was 6.25 inches. That's big. That's a big group from a, from a bench rest scoped rifle. That's pretty big. Okay. But then on the suppressed side, after doing the exact same routine, we came out with a two inch group. So there's some differences. That's why I shot a five inch group because if you shoot a bunch of three inch groups, people just call you out for it. And I, ultimately, if you could shoot a hundred round group, that would be too much because your barrel is going to heat up and it's going to start expanding. So forget what I was about to say there. But the, you can end up shooting too many rounds and sometime, at some point it just becomes like, okay, you're just shooting a bunch of rounds. You're going to add a bunch of variations in there, trigger fatigue, you know, finger fatigue, you know, barrel warmth and all that stuff. There's a bunch of science and whatever. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if you average out all these numbers, you still come up with 3.6. That's what I came up with in my homeschool brain um, or on the iPhone, a, whatever. <clears throat> Six or 3.6 inches. That's still kind of big it's still kind of a large group granted some of those those big groups that last round of tula 625 that's going to bring up that average now i wonder if i take that out if it would be much any difference but that's just one group a lot of these were in the four inch groups a lot of them even some of the good stuff fioki black hills running two and three quarter and three inches black hills that's quality stuff i don't know if you're going to laugh or scoff at black hills but that's some pretty quality stuff 
Even my hand loads didn't do that that hot. Out of this guy, they're not doing that hot. Out of my Mark 12, they're gold. Out of here, hmm, not so much. So anyway, guys, this is a one in eight twist barrel. All right, if this was a one in seven, I would think that it would shoot better. But I can't say it's the optic. I can't say it's the mounts. I can't say it's anything else in the gun. The barrel, I know I put this thing on properly. Um, it's been built at least twice because I took it off and I did some stuff to it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's on there correctly. It's not over torqued. It's not under torqued. It's on there fine. I ran, I didn't run a tactical games with it. I ran the, the class with it and it functioned fine. Everything worked good. I did have my gas block come off a little bit. That barrel is not dimpled. So it did turn a little bit. I never had a failure with it, surprisingly. But that's not an accuracy thing necessarily. I mean, ultimately, yeah, if it's bouncing around. But no, 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 no. Whenever I put it on paper, that was not an issue. Okay, I'm just trying to spitball and give you any kind of information. But really, I don't know what it is. So I'm going to get a hold of Faxon again and give them these numbers. If they think this is fine, then it's fine. In all honesty, from here to 100 yards, that's basically all this guy's ever going to do. And with a red dot... That's probably fine. But then again, with a red dot, see, I'm just spitballing with y'all. With a red dot, you have a dot that you're putting out there, a non-magnified dot that you're putting out there, right, as an aiming point. Whether it be a 1 MOA dot or a 3 MOA dot or a 2, I don't know, whatever, depends on what it is. I can't remember what the EOTech is at this time. I think it's a 1 MOA. I don't remember. But it depends on how bright it is because it blooms, it gets bigger, or perceivably gets bigger and smaller. Whereas this guy is a 10 power scope, right? If you've ever looked down these optics, I love these things because they don't have anything in the middle. They, all the crosshairs come to this little bitty point and right in the middle is a little blank spot. So you can put the little red of your sticker right in that red spot and you know you're right on. Or if you want to give me more fine point, you can aim off the front, uh, off the, 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 the lower vertical post, whatever, of your crosshairs. You can aim off the very tip of that and you can get very precise in my opinion, with this scope. So if this scope, my most precise scope, is only being able to squeeze this out of it, then putting a aim point or an EOTech or a Holosyn or some kind of non-magnified red dot on there, inevitably your zero is going, or not your zero, your, your groups are going to open up a little bit, which would make sense because whenever I shot some of those videos showing the shooting in different angles and stuff, those were some big, big groups. Anyway, guys, weigh in down in the comments below. This will be interesting. This will be an interesting one to see what y'all think. Um, I shot good ammo. You can't fault me for ammo. Um, I did shoot Tula, right, or whatever this is. Tula or Wolf, whatever. I think it's, yeah, it's Tula. Um, I did shoot that because that's primarily what I shoot. But I think it's also a case in point to see that this shoots pretty much very closely the same as some of this Black Hills, this... And yes, it's free ammunition, but this is, I'm telling you, I have a lot of experience with that. That that load of free ammunition stuff, it's good. The hand loads, the Fioki, it's good quality ammo. You can't, I don't I don't see how you can scoff at that. But anyway, let me know what y'all think. If it's at the barrel, is it is it something else? Is it weird? Am I just sneezing every time I pull the trigger? Let me know. I'm going to get a hold of Faxon and see what they want to do, and I will keep y'all up to date. All right? Appreciate y'all watching and subscribing and everything. Really, really do. And that's pretty much it. Thankfully, the sun came out. I don't know, but it's going to rain, so I'm going to try to get out of here. All right, y'all be good to be safe. We'll catch you all in the next video.